See how we went from this stump to just a pile of ashes in two days. This stump is a little too tall to burn. Let's cut it back before we get started. Though we loved this little chainsaw, it was just too small to make one clean pass through the log. We ended up getting a bigger one soon after this project. Believe it or not, there is still green stuff on this stump. Some parts of this tree were still alive, which means there is probably a good amount of moisture still in the stump and roots. This will definitely play a role in how this thing burns. Taking a look at the crosscut, we can see this tree was just barely hanging on. As you can see, a majority of the trunk is rotten. Amazing, some parts of this thing were still alive given how much rot there was. Prior to burning, we decided to dig down to the roots. Though this was the most labor intensive part, I think it really helped it burn parts of this stump below ground level. Next, we add some cross cuts to the stump, which we take all the way down to the major roots. This will allow that fire to breathe from the inside of that stump. Also, we added a good amount of vegetable oil to really get this thing cooking. Once the vegetable oil soaked in, we topped off the stump with some lighter fluid to give us an easy light. A quick note, we lit this thing off soon after we dug out around the stump, so it really wasn't given enough time to dry out. However, the longer we would have waited, the higher the odds it would have gotten rained on. Plus, we didn't want to have to look at this thing any longer. If you're going to drench the stump in flammable liquid like we did, obviously don't use gasoline, or the stump won't be the only thing on fire. Although we managed to capture captivating footage of the burn, we would have implemented a slightly different approach knowing what we know now. You'll see here in a minute or so why this is not necessarily the best method to burn out a stump. At this stage, the roots did not burn that well. We'll be sure to put the heat on them later though. A couple things I think we did right was adding the vegetable oil and making those cuts with the chainsaw to allow better airflow for the fire. As we can see, the rotted portions of the stump caught fire and disappeared with ease. We started adding additional wood to hopefully burn those greener parts. If we had to do this again, we would include a metal drum with holes or some kind of opening for airflow to better contain the heat. The remaining portion of the stump was the greenest part, and a barrel placed over the stump while it burned would have helped cook out any residual moisture. Since we didn't have a barrel or a drum, we used some of the coals from the inside of the stump to start a fire on the roots. You'll see that we were able to put a char on the outside of the stump, but that's about it. Some of the footage is a little blurry due to the heat. Throughout this process, I had to consistently move the camera so it wouldn't overheat. Also, we had a fan blowing on the fire to make it hotter. Unfortunately, as we mentioned earlier, a lot of that heat wasn't being focused on the remaining stump. The first day of burning was a relative success, as we burned a majority of the stump away, though most of the roots remained fairly intact. One day of burning wasn't going to cut it. We picked this up the next day. Well, it's tomorrow, and we've blown out the ash with a leaf blower to get a better view. As you can see, the greenest part of the stump is still standing. We took that little chainsaw that we love, and we sawed off the tall parts. If you're enjoying this content, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Next, we drilled some holes into what was left of the stump and roots. We figured it couldn't hurt to add some spots where coals could potentially fall into and burn the roots from the inside. However, given the size of this root system, this took a decent amount of time. We started the next burn by getting some coals started in a chiminea. We figured starting this fire out with coals would get us off to a hot start, rather than having to start a fire on top of the roots. For those asking, why not just grind the stump out? Well, we only had one stump to get rid of at this time. Plus, we had extra scrap wood and branches we needed to get rid of. And who doesn't like a good fire? The weather on this day was relatively windy, which may have had some role in the local fire department coming to chat with us. Obviously, check your local ordinances to see if this type of burning is allowed. At the time, we were unaware of the fine print in the city code. Technically, we were allowed to burn like this as long as the fire pit had a non-combustible perimeter, like rocks, and the pit wasn't over a certain diameter. As you can probably tell, we really threw the kitchen sink at it this time. We had piles of branches and limbs from recent tree trimmings. We were able to get most of the branches and limbs burned up before the hose jockeys came to check on us. Also, another benefit to using a barrel would be reduced smoke as the fire in the barrel gets hotter and can burn more efficiently. 
If you plan to use this method to get rid of your stumps, take precautions like having a water hose nearby and watering the surrounding area. You don't want Smokey the Bear coming after you. Another good reason to use a barrel is that it will help contain the fire. After getting scolded by the local fire department, we added a rock perimeter. What's that old saying? Ask for forgiveness before permission? Anyways, here's the aftermath with two days of burning. We were able to get this stump well below ground level, though I think we will incorporate a metal barrel into the process next go around. One, two, three. Not at the phone, you f